Hello, I am Shavin Stonehui of Eve University, and this video is an explanation of turret mathematics in EVE Online. The three major weapon systems in EVE Online are turrets, missiles, and drones. There are other kinds of weapons besides these, but these three are the most commonly used, and drones are essentially flying turrets as far as their basic calculations are concerned. So it's very important to understand how the, how the numbers are used that govern turret combat. For this exercise, this is my current ship fitting, a Catalyst-class Galente destroyer. Uh, I've got two different types of turrets on here. Half of them are railguns, half of them are blasters. And that's just for demonstration purposes so that I can show you the differences between them. Note that under normal circumstances, I do not recommend mixing guns like this. Because it means that you can't bring all of your firepower to bear against a target at the same time. Choose one or the other. For reasons that I'll get to in a moment. Uh, so let's take a look at the railguns first. And I'm going to show info on the railguns from the fitting window. This is important because the show info window will take my skills and bonuses into account. If I show info on a 125mm carbide railgun 1 uh, from the market, that's going to just show me the base numbers for the turret, uh, not taking anything else whatsoever into account. So showing info from on this from the fitting window. Turrets will miss their target because of two general reasons. The target is too far away, and or the target is moving around the shooter in circles. Uh, for those of you who are mathematically inclined, uh, here's the hit probability equation for that. Uh, one half to the power of what I'm going to call a tracking term squared plus what I'm going to call a distance term squared. So let's take a look at that distance term first. Every turret has an optimal range, within which the turret will not lose probability to hit just because of distance alone. So my optimal range with these railguns is about 7.8 kilometers, or 7,796 meters. So within 7.8 kilometers, my railguns will not miss just because of distance. They might miss because the target's going around me in circles, but they're not going to miss because of distance alone. Beyond 7.8 kilometers, the turrets will miss because of distance alone. And how quickly they lose their probability to hit is, di is dictated by the accuracy falloff, which in my case is 7,150 meters. The shorter the falloff range, the more rapidly a turret will lose accuracy be because of distance once, you're beyond, once the target is beyond optimal. The greater the falloff, the more slowly the turret, the turret will lose accuracy. And basically the way this works is if you're shooting at a target that's within optimal range or less and sitting stock still, which later we'll see that means zero angular velocity, so if you're shooting at optimal range or less and the, at a target that's not moving relative to you, then you, the shot is guaranteed. All right? uh, if the target's at optimal plus fall off, it's going to be a one half chance to hit. If the target's at optimal plus two times fall off, it's going to be a one sixteenth chance to hit. If it's at optimal plus three times fall off, it's going to be one chance out of 512 to hit. And for those of you who are interested in seeing that equation again, right, uh, basically, if the target set optimal plus two times fall off, this term here is two, two squared is four, one half to the power of four is one sixteenth. So at optimal plus two fall off, it's a one sixteenth chance to hit. By the way, for the rest of this video, uh, when I speak of distances, if it's not in units of meters or kilometers, I will typically be speaking in terms of optimal plus a multiple of falloff. Or, as a shorthand, I might say that it's one falloff away or one and a half falloffs away, by which I actually mean optimal plus 
that many falloffs away. Right? So it's at optimal range or less, or it's at optimal plus some multiple of the falloff. So I'll speak of optimal plus half falloff, optimal plus falloff, optimal plus two times falloff, and so on. It does not make sense to speak of two times optimal plus falloff. That's a meaningless quantity. All right, so that's losing accuracy because of distance alone. You can also lose accuracy because the target is moving around you in circles, which is where this turret tracking number comes in. So for my uh, railguns here, I've got a turret tracking number of 127.6275, uh, which, which is a number that goes right here into this term. Uh, but just to make understanding this term easier on you, the easiest way to think of this number is if you're trying to hit a target whose signature radius is exactly 40 meters, then to have at least a one-half chance to hit, you want to keep the angular velocity below uh, 127.6 milliradians per second, or 0 0.1276 radians per second. Right. Radians are a unit of angular measure commonly used by uh, scientists and engineers in real life. Uh, it's approximately equal to 57 point something degrees. I forget the exact number off the top of my head. One full, one full circle, one full rotation is 360 degrees is 2 pi radians, or approximately 6.28 radians. Now angular velocity is another concept that you should probably understand in EVE Online. Very important to turret combat. Notice how all these rats are moving around me. Uh, they're orbiting around me all the time. Right? And they've settled into nice, smooth, circular orbits around me. So they're about 2,015 meters away from me and going around me in circles at 266 meters per second. So if you imagine line seg a line segment between the center of my ship and the center of one of these gisty hijackers. The direction of that line segment is in space is changing all the time as these gisty hijackers are moving in circles around me. Uh, that's that angular change, how quickly that line segment is changing direction, that's the angular velocity that's being represented here. And it can also be calculated as the velocity, uh, the transversal velocity, rather, uh, here. Let me expand this out a little bit and open up my overview settings. I want columns, transversal. And I don't need corporation or alliance right now. Here we go. All right, so their transversal velocity is 266 meters per second. Which is to say uh, how fast they're moving to the side, all right? So again, if I'm looking at, let's say, this gisty hijacker over here, here's the line segment between me and that uh, NPC. It's moving perpendicular to that line all the time. So uh, 266 meters per second is both their transversal velocity and their absolute velocity relative to the game's absolute coordinate grid. So right now, because they're nicely settled, those two numbers are the same. But this angular velocity can be calculated as the transversal divided by the distance. So 266 divided by 2015, uh, which is 0.132 radians per second, which within round-off error agrees with the number in the angular velocity column. Right. So that's what that angular velocity is. Um, it has nothing whatsoever to do with how quickly the ship is turning. Uh, the, the art geometry of your ship is irrelevant as far as the physics are concerned. Your ship could be spinning like a top and breakdancing in place, and that's not going to have any effect whatsoever on the angular velocities. But if I start uh, running away from these gisty hijackers, let me go off in that direction and hit my afterburner and start speeding away from these things, 
Now the situation changes. Right? Now instead of going sideways relative to the line of fire, they're chasing after me. They're running trying to catch up to me. So they can't move to the side as quickly. So that means that the transversal velocities are much lower. Additionally, the uh, distances are also increasing. Put these two factors together and the angular velocity drops quite a lot. So if an enemy is very close to you, the enemy is probably moving and their transversal velocity divided by a very small distance results in a very high angular velocity. So if enemies are in close at you, they're going, uh, your shots will, might very well miss because the enemy is moving around you in circles and very quickly at that. But you're not missing because of distance alone, you're missing because of transversal divided by distance, or in other words, you're missing because of the angular velocity. And getting back to uh, getting back to the turret tracking number, uh, as I was saying before, the best way to think of this turret tracking number, if you're trying to hit a 40 meter signature radius frigate, then to have at least a one half chance to hit, you need to keep the angular velocity below point one uh, one two seven radians per second. That that that's in my particular case. If you have a turret tracking number of 20 then you need to keep the target below 20 milliradians per second, or 0.02 radians per second. That's assuming that you're shooting at a target whose signature radius is exactly 40 meters. Let me get to signature radius. So you can see your own signature radius in your fitting window. It's under the targeting section. Uh, if all of these headers are collapsed, you're probably going to want to expand them. And because the shape of the fitting window doesn't change with this, you may as well just expand it all. But it's under the targeting header, and you can see your own signature radius. The game will not directly tell you what somebody else's signature radius is. You would have to know that uh, based on observations or such. If your target is another player, you're in a PvP fight, you're going to have to guess based on... Well, that guy's flying a Vexor, so I know a Vexor has a signature radius of... Blah. What is the signature radius of a Vexor? That's something you can look up. You can look up uh, the basic information for a Vexor. Its signature radius is 145 meters if you were shooting a Vexor. And if, depending on what else they might have fit to their ship, that signature radius might go up further than that, depending on how they're fit. So you can try to make an educated guess, but you can't usually know for certain. Now these are NPCs, they are of type Gisty Hijacker, so there is, um, there are websites where you can actually look it up. There are third-party websites that um, host copies of the static data, which is to say all the game design data that doesn't change except when there's a new patch. And for a Gisty Hijacker specifically, um, it's got a signature radius of 30 meters. So how does that affect my situation? Uh, well, here, I've got a turret tracking number of 127.6275. But I need to scale that for a 30 meter target. That's three quarters of 40. So, divided by 40, then multiply by 30. So if I want to hit these gisty hijackers at least one half of the time, then I need to keep the angular velocity below 95.7 milliradians per second, or 0 0.0957 radians per second. Uh, they're going around me uh, considerably faster than that. Let's see. They're going around me at about, let's see, 132.3. So they're going out around me at about 1.38 times the number that I just stated. And let's call that, uh, let's call that 95 my effective tracking speed against Gisty Hijackers. Right? So your effective tracking speed against a 40 meter 
or my effective tracking speed against a 40 meter target is about 127 milliradians per second. Against a 30 meter target, it's about 95 milliradians per second. So that's my effective tracking speed against these targets. So they're going around me at about mm, 1.38 times my effective tracking speed. What's my probability to hit? I take this 1.38, I square it, that's about 1.91. Uh, then I say 0 0.5 to the power of 1.91. My chance to hit is about 26.6%. Not terrible, but it's definitely not good. So if I start using my railguns to fire at one of these things... Well, that was a lucky shot. That one actually died. Um... Keep in mind, I have four of these things. So there's four guns firing together. Okay, let me actually demonstrate... Uh, let me clear the group, so I'm only shooting them with one railgun at a time. So that missed. That one missed. That one missed. That one missed. You can see it's cycling down here. That one missed. That one missed. Oh, that one hit. That one missed. That one missed. So yeah, that's about a one quarter chance to hit. All right. So these are not really good conditions for my railguns to be trying to shoot these things. So again, to calculate that effective tracking speed, you would have to either know or make a reasonable guess as to what the target's signature radius is. But take that signature radius, divide it by 40 meters, uh, then multiply by the turret tracking number on your guns. And that's going to be your effective tracking speed against that target. And the way, uh, the way this equation works out, uh, if the target's sitting stock still in an optimal range or less, the dis let's, well, let's just stick with optimal range or, net or less for now. So the distance term here is zero. 0 squared is 0. It's added to something, so that goes away. So we're just looking at the tracking term here. So if the target is sitting still relative to me, then its angular velocity is 0. 0 squared is 0, so this entire exponent is 0. 1 half to the 0 power is 1. That's a 100%. That's a guaranteed chance to hit. If the target's moving around me at my effective tracking speed, well, this term is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 half to the power of 1 is 1 half. If it's going around me at 2 times my effective tracking speed, well, that's going to be 2 squared, which is 4. 1 half to the power of 4 is 1 16th. That means a 1 16th chance to hit. And like I said, your turret can lose accuracy because of both reasons. So, if your target is at optimal plus fall off, then the fall-off term, the, the distance term is 1. And it's going around you at 1 times your effective tracking speed. Your tracking term is also 1. 1 squared plus 1 squared, that's 1 plus 1, that's 2. 1 half to the power of 2, that's a 1 quarter chance to hit. If your target is, by some miracle, uh, going around you at 2 times your effective tracking speed, while also being at optimal plus 2 times fall-off, well, now this term is 2, this term is 2. 2 squared is 4, plus another 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. 1 half to the 8th power, that's one shot out of 256. Or about a 0 0.4 chance to hit, roughly. So both of these things uh, can be, uh, be non-zero at the same time, and usually they are. Usually you're, depending on what weapon you're using, really long-range weapons uh, with long optimal ranges, you might be fighting within optimal. But some weapons you might be fighting within, say, optimal plus one half fall off or optimal plus fall off. Um, so you're going to be losing accuracy because of both distance and angular velocity at the same time. So that's the probability to hit. Let's take a look at the damage, and first we're going to calculate the baseline amount of damage per shot. So the charges that I have loaded in here, hold down shift, click on this, 
These are antimatter charge S's. So they convey five thermal and seven kinetic damage per shot. This gets multiplied by the damage modifier on the turret itself, which is times 2.81589. So 2.81589 times, uh, let's say the five thermal damage. So this antimatter charge combined with this railgun with my skills and on this Catalyst Destroyer, uh, we're looking at 14 thermal damage per shot. That's this times this. And for the kinetic, that's 7 times 2.81589. That's going to be 19.7 kinetic damage per shot. That's the baseline. There is a random factor to the amount of damage done per shot. Uh, it can be as low as one half of that baseline, or it can be as much as one and a half times that baseline. Uh, so, as I was saying, let's say with the thermal damage here, if I... All right, so the baseline is 14 thermal damage per shot. It might go as low as seven, as high as 21 thermal damage per shot. All right, and the kinetic, it's going to be the same deal. Um, so times 2.8... Uh, so it might go as low as 9.8 kinetic damage, or go as high as 29.5 kinetic damage per shot. It, it'll be the same multiplier in both cases. So if the thermal is down to around, let's say, one half, the kinetic will also be one half at the same time. Right? The proportions... Uh, are dictated by the ammunition type. This is not, uh, the proportion between these two is not going to change because of a random factor. Uh, there is a 1% chance that it will be a wrecking shot, in which case it's going to be triple the baseline damage. So, in other words, it'll be 42 thermal. Here, let me run that number again. 5 times 2.8 times 3 for a wrecking shot. It could be as much as 42 thermal damage and 58.8 kinetic damage on a wrecking shot. But again, wrecking shots are only 1% uh, out of all of your shots, assuming that you have at least a 1% one a one chance to hit. Uh, now, here's the thing about that random factor. The same random factor that is used to determine whether or, sh whether or not your shot hit is also used to determine how much damage that shot hit. So for random numbers that are rolled near, let's say, 1, so 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1, those will be your hardest hitting shots, but those will also be the first to be thrown away if your chance to hit is not guaranteed. Right? So if you've only got a 70% chance to hit, and you roll a 0 0.8, that's a miss. Roll a point seven two. That's a miss. Roll a point nine. That's a miss. Roll a point six eight. That's a hit, and that point six eight is going to get added to hmm, approximately one half. All right. Point six eight plus point four nine. Uh, that's going to be a one point one seven random multiplier. Right, which is almost as hard as you're going to be able to achieve with any of your shots uh, for a 70% chance to hit. So the more your chance to hit drops, the, strong, uh, the more you're losing your strongest hitting shots. And the ones that will land are going to be your weakest hitting shots. With the exception of wrecking shots, which sit at the bottom 1% of that probability space. So if your chance to hit is only half a percent, then you're only going to hit half a percent of the time, but they will all be wrecking shots. So that's how that works. Finally, uh, that's all. everything you need to know about turret combat, given the numbers that go into your turrets. Let's now take a look at where these numbers are coming from. All right, so this is a 125 millimeter carbide railgun one. Um, if I mouse over it, it says the base value is 2.31. Uh, 
and you can prove that to yourself. Uh, 125 mm carbide. Not what I meant to do. Hold down shift, then click. There we go. Let go shift. All right. So the where did it go? Oh, they don't put the attributes in the same order for some reason. All right. So the base damage modifier is 2.31. Okay, which is what it's in the tooltip. So just because it's a 125 millimeter carbide railgun. Uh, that's got a starting damage modifier of 2.31. This can be increased by skills, bonuses, and other and other modules and rigs. Right? Uh, so the skills that might come into play, for example, would be in the gunnery category. Uh, small hybrid turret. That's a 5% bonus to small hybrid turret damage per level. I've got that at level 3, so that's a 1.15 multiplier. 15% bonus, that's a 1.15 multiplier. Let me grab my... Uh, let me grab text edit here. 2.31 times 1.15. Uh, and there's one other factor that I'm missing, at least. All right. Um... Surgical Strike, 3% bonus to the damage of all weapon turrets. I've got that at level 2, so that's a 1.06 multiplier. Uh, times 1.06. I'm just keeping track of all this. So 2.31 times 1.15 times 1.06. Uh, 2.31 2 Yeah. So those are the two things that are increasing the damage modifier on my turret. All right. So small hybrid turret level three, surgical strike level two. Uh, this is a catalyst, uh, which bonuses the fall off range and the tracking speed and the optimal range, but not the damage. So I'm more likely to hit targets given a certain distance and angular velocity. Um, but they're not going to hit any harder just because I have them fit to a catalyst rather than, say, to a Minmatar vessel or an Amarian vessel. Now, the catalyst here does bonus the tracking speed. Right? So let's take a look at the tracking speed number here. Uh, in my case, it's 127.6. The base number is 89.25. So let me grab that. So 89.25 times... Um, and again, there are skills that come into play. Uh, should be trajectory analysis. No, that's fall off. Um, motion prediction. There we go. I have motion prediction level 2, so that's a 10% bonus to tracking speed. So that's a 1.1 multiplier. I'm sitting in a Catalyst class Galente Destroyer. That's a 10% bonus... Uh, per level of Galente Destroyer. So, Spaceship Command, I've got Galente Destroyer level 3. So, that's a 1.3 multiplier. Um, are those the only factors in play? 89.25 times 1.1 times 1.3. Yes, those are the only factors in play. 127.62. Uh, which agrees. All right. So that's skill-related bonuses and ship-related bonuses, which, of course, depends on your skills. These numbers can also be affected by other modules that, and rigs that you have on the ship, which I'm not using in this, in this particular case because I don't have enough slots for it. Um, but if I wanted to help my turret tracking, accuracy fall-off, and optimal range... Uh, there are modules I can use for that. There are tracking computers. Here, let me find them. So ship equipment, turrets and bays, weapon upgrades. So there are tracking computers that I can use. These are mid-slot modules. They cycle. They use capacitor energy. You have to activate them. You can also script uh, load tracking computers with a script. Um... It's kind of like an ammunition that is not consumed. So you can use, uh, you can load a tracking computer with a script, 
uh, to focus on the optimal and falloff bonuses, getting rid of this tracking speed bonus. Or you can script it the other way, focus on the tracking speed bonus, get rid of the optimal and falloff bonuses. All right. uh, or you can leave it unscripted and it does half of each. All right. So leaving it unscripted and not taking skills into account, this would increase my falloff by 10%, optimal by 5%, and tracking speed by 10%. Um, but if I script it for tracking speed, it'll double this to 20% and then eliminate these other two bonuses. Right. Uh, you can also use low slot modules called tracking enhancers. Uh, these also help optimal falloff and tracking speed, but you cannot script these and you cannot activate them. Right. Um, so they do a little bit of everything uh, without needing to use capacitor energy. Uh, and they use a low slot instead of a mid slot. There are also rigs that you can use, uh, which I won't go into detail here, but there are also rigs that can help uh, your optimal fall off in tracking speed. Right? If I wanted to improve the damage or the refire time of my guns... Um... By the way, one note about the refire time. This is actually a, uh, a refire time, not a rate of fire as it's advertised. It's got units of seconds. Any engineer or mathematician will tell you seconds is not a unit of rate. Inverse seconds would be a unit of rate. So if this were actually expressed as a rate, it would be one shot... Um, it, it would be 0 0.3636 shots per second. That would be a rate of fire. Right. What CCP presents to you is actually a refire time. Additionally, anything that claims to increase your rate of fire by X percent is actually reducing your refire time by X percent. And again, any mathematician will tell you those are not the same thing. An X percent increase to the numerator is not the same thing as an X percent decrease to the denominator except in the limit where x is extremely close to zero. All right. All right, so this is actually a refire time. And there are modules that I can use to improve these numbers. Since I'm using blasters and railguns, I would want to look at the magnetic field stabilizers. So here's a, stand, a meta zero magnetic field stabilizer. It will reduce the refire time by 8%. So this 2.75 gets multiplied by 0.92. It would become a refire time of 2.53 seconds. And it would increase the damage modifier by 1.07. Uh, now the thing about using modules and rigs to, to improve your damage modifier and refire time, these suffer from something called stacking penalties, uh, which I won't go into detail on this video about, but be aware that when two or more modules affect the same attribute on your ship, it might be, if it's a stacking penalized quantity, then the effect is not just a straight up multiplicative. It, it, it'll be, it will still be multiplicative, but the bonuses will be reduced for each successive module. So, um, let me take the magnetic field stabilizer tech twos. So if I put a whole bunch of these on the same ship, uh, where the damage modifier claims to be a 10% bonus, the first one will be a 10% bonus, the next one will be an 8.6% bonus, the next one will be a 5.7% bonus, the next one will be a 2.6% bonus, the next one will be a 1% bonus. That's what stacking penalties will do to you. So if anything you have on your ship is stacking penalized, you probably don't want to have more than three of it, generally speaking. All right, but that's where the numbers come from that go into these turret numbers. Uh, and finally, let me actually show you the difference between the blasters and the railguns here. Uh, so we've been looking at the railguns the entire time. Let me show you the blasters. So whereas the railguns have an optimal of 7.8 and a falloff of about 7.1 kilometers, 
but a low tracking speed, a tracking speed of only 127.6 milliradians per second against a 40 meter target. The blasters are much different. They've got a much shorter optimal range. Optimal range is only a little more than a kilometer. The fall off is not much better. That's only about 2.8, 2.9 uh, kilometers. So to have a one half chance to hit, I've got to keep the target significantly below four kilometers. But their turret tracking number is much larger, 576 milliradians per second against a 40 meter target. Right. So blasters are much, much better at dealing with close orbiting targets, but they're terrible at hitting anything that's far away. Whereas with the railguns, they're good at hitting things that are far away, but terrible at hitting anything that's close in orbiting. Which brings me back to my original uh, piece of advice, don't mix guns like this. I'm mixing guns for demonstration purposes, but you should not mix guns like this in a live situation. You can only bring half your firepower to bear uh, at any given time. The only circumstance where I can actually do my maximum damage against a single target is if that target is sitting stock still relative to me, Maybe I've got a lot of stasis webifiers on it or something. Careful, stasis webifiers are also stacking penalized. So maybe I've got two or three stasis webs on it or something. Uh, so that the railguns can hit it. But I'm also one kilometer away from the silly thing. So that the blasters can hit it. So the only circumstance in which all of these weapons can hit at the same time, uh, guaranteed, is if I'm closer than one kilometer or 1.1 kilometers... Sorry, closer than 1.1 kilometers, but also keeping the angular velocity very low at the same time, near zero. That that's the only way I can bring the firepower of both these different weapon types to bear at the same time. Which is an extremely difficult thing to do. I don't advise it. So again, don't mix guns. Right. So, whereas the rail guns only had a one quarter chance to hit, uh, let me clear the blasters so I can demonstrate with the blasters here. If I use the blasters, every shot is hitting. I open fire. Boom. Boom. I open fire. Boom. Boom. Alright. What is my chance to hit with these blasters? Let's calculate that. Um... First of all, uh, they're not actually at, um, they're not actually within optimal range, so that's the first issue. Uh, so let's take this one that's at 2,015 meters away from me. So 2015 minus 1082, that's 933, divided by the accuracy falloff, that's 2860. So he, the distance term here is 0.326. Let me put that into text edit. Now let's figure out what the tracking term is. Um, 576.576 uh, times 30 divided by 40. So against a Gisty hijacker, I've got a tracking speed of 432.432 milliradians per second. I'm going to take the inverse of that and multiply by the actual angular velocity in milliradians. So 132.3. So that's the tracking term. All right. So now what we do, we take the tracking term, we square it. Let me put that in memory. I'm going to take the distance term, square that, add that into memory, do a recall on this. So that's a, oh, that comes out almost neatly at 0 0.2, almost by coincidence, uh, just by coincidence. So this is going to be one half to the power of the sum we just calculated, the distance term squared plus the tracking term squared. So I've got an 87% chance per shot to hit these things with my blasters. Where did my last blaster go? There we go. All right. 
So that explains turret mathematics. The final detail that I'll point out is, again, drones are essentially flying turrets. Uh, where Your light, medium, and heavy drones will orbit your target and shoot your target from a close orbit. Um... So it's the what you care about there is the angular velocity between your drone and the target, not between you and the target. All right, but otherwise all the same calculations uh, work out uh, exactly the same. So that's how you deal with the mathematics for your high slot turrets. I'm Seamus Dunhu of Eve University. Thank you for watching.